Ipswich Town are sitting in second place of the Skybet Championship. Kieran McKenna has got them playing fantastic football. Following a recent promotion from Skybet League 1, they are currently pushing to actually get into the Premier League. If you're an Ipswich Town fan, you're probably in heaven right now. We've got our hands on Kieran McKenna's explosive tactic with Ipswich Town that is helping them get fantastic results in real life. Thanks to Cottage Tatico at view from the Touchline Football Manager blog, we got our hands on the exact recreation of Kieran McKenna's tactic for FM 2024. And if you you want to get good results playing attacking football in the lower leagues of football manager you can actually go on and start with this tactic now if you're not aware about view from the touchline blog or website this is where you can actually go on to find football manager recreations in-depth tactical recreations of real life football manager tactic as well as football manager guides to tactical analysis, tactical recreations, and how to build the best football manager tactics in game for your team. You can go over to the website. I'm going to attach a link in the description so you can click for that website. I'm also going to attach a link to Kieran McKenna's in-depth analysis of tactics written by Cottage Tactical for view from the Touchline FM. You can go ahead and read the full detail. But in this video, I'm going to present to you the tactic as well. It's done very well in Football Manager 2024. Now in the game, Ipswich are currently in third place. They have 94 points right now with a goal difference of 48. So they are quite settled in finishing in the promotion places. In real life, they're currently in second place and they're not quite far from the team that is third. But Leicester are the favorites, so that's not going to be much of a problem. The tactic actually did quite well. If you look at the player stats, we have two players in here in George Hurst and Wes Burns. They are two players that actually had double figures in goals scored. George Hurst is the striker for Ipswich Town and then Wes Burns, of course, is Wes Burns, of course. He had 16 goals. The most shots were taken by Ipswich Town's George Hurst and Connor Chaplin. So you can see that the tactic actually encourages the players to shoot a lot more and take a lot of chances. It does create a lot of chances as well. The left back is the most creative in this tactic. We can see Leif Davis here, just behind Kieran Drewsbury Hall. He has 110 key passes and he's a left back. So that's it for the player stats. So you can look at the team stats overall that Ipswich Town actually had the most shots with 667. That's the leagues above what Birmingham City were able to do. The most goals were scored by Leeds United. They had 106, but Ipswich had more goals than Leicester City with 98. Possession-wise, it's not a possession-based tactic, so I don't expect Ipswich Town to be in the average possession rankings. If you're familiar with the way they play, they do have an attacking style of play, so they don't dwell on the ball too much. Most points per game is a little over 2, they had 2.09. And despite being encouraged to tackle a lot, Ipswich Town are only in 8th place for the most tackles in the game. We'll look at what Cottage Tactical actually says here in the blog post. Ipswich normally line up in a fairly familiar 4-2-3-1, but structurally, the team actually splits itself into two different phases. First, a patient, progressive structure to break down the press with the goalkeeper, defenders, and the deep midfield pivot, working to play with simple passing while looking to pass and carry the ball, allowing them to break into space for fluid and direct attacks. When they do break through, the shape kind of transforms into a 5 up front with the left back, Leif Davis, joining aggressively to hold the width on the left hand side. He also explains that he prefers a simple build up so no expansive centre back roles are selected for this tactic. The normal central defenders are used, although one of them is playing on cover duty. Ahead of them you have two sitters in two defensive midfielders, both of them have slightly different roles. One is more like a holding midfielder while the other operates like a player that can actually link the chain between the space ahead of the defensive midfielders and the attackers that are ahead. So that gap in between the normal central midfield role, there isn't any player in there. So the second defensive midfielder is going to act like a link between the defense and the attackers that are playing in the other region of the field, the second phase. The striker in this system could have been a target man, but based on Cote's tactical test, he noticed that the target man was slightly more stationary and he didn't offer much in variety when it comes to attacking. So opting for a tall player that plays as an advance forward on attack duty helped him get the balance he was looking for. So guys, I'm going to walk you through Ipswich Town's Kieran McKenna's tactic. There are two or three variations of the tactic created by Cottage Tatico. This is the first variation. And then you have a second variation where it's called alternative. I'm going to assume that's what the ALT means. And then there's a third version that is tilted to the right hand side. So the first version, by the way, all of them do have attacking mentality because of the way Kieran McKenna likes to play with his Ipswich Town team. They aren't so patient in possession, but the three tactics are very similar to one another. And we're going to break down each instruction, each player role with the way Cottage Tactical actually built up the tactic in FM 2024. The right back is a wing back on defend duty, and he's going to also form a sort of back three with the central defender on stopper duty drifting to the left hand side. The double pivot is two defensive midfielders, one on support duty and the other also on support duty. You 
you can see that the left sided defensive midfielder has been asked to get for the forward and to tackle harder while the right sided defensive midfielder is going to hold his position and be more defensive in the number 10 role you have an attacking midfielder on attack duty and he is going to dribble a lot more shoot more often and then run from positions on either side of him you have a winger on attack duty and an inverted winger on support duty and of course the front man is an advanced forward on attack the winger on attack duty doesn't have any instructions the inverted winger on support duty has been asked to cross less often and sit narrower while your advance forward the striker is only going to move into channels which is a default advance forward instruction team instructions wise i said this before it's an attacking tactic so the mentality is set to attacking but if you look at the way the team is shaped up in possession they are going to play with a slightly higher tempo but they're going to move the ball towards the left hand side a lot because you have remember the complete wing back on attack duty playing on that left hand side so they're going to focus to play down that left and overlap on that left hand side as well they're also passing into space and then you can see that the team has been expected or is expected to run at the defense a whole lot and be more expressive try to create more chances and use their individual ability to try and fashion out chances for themselves in the final third the only instruction that is selected here is what kieran mckenna enjoys doing with the cutbacks in the white areas if three town do score a lot of goals from cutbacks so low crosses has been selected in this tactic but if you're in your own team and then you want to actually tweak that to a more mixed or weight crossing you can actually do that according to the description now in transition there's a high press selected so you can notice that counter press and counter are very crucial for this attacking style of play the team also plays out from the back so you can see that the goalkeeper has been asked to take short kicks and then distribute it to the fullbacks out of possession they tend to funnel the ball into the central areas where you have two defensive midfielders on support duty and then of course the central defender that is on stopper duty is also combining with them he's also going to try and stop this attack at source so you're going to funnel the ball into the center by trapping the opposition inside they're also getting stuck in so even players in the attacking regions that the center forward and attack the attacking midfielders and then the winger on the inside forward they are going to try to tackle harder and win the ball early so get stuck in is selected for this system they're also preventing the short goalkeeper distribution and pressing a lot more often of the opposition team try to stop them from playing and then you have a winger on support duty as well before he was on attack but now he's currently on support the complete wing back is no longer playing as a complete wing back he's now playing as a wing back on attack duty those are the subtle changes to the player roles and then if you look at the out of possession instruction the one change that i noticed here is that the defensive line is no longer high it's now standard defensive line every other instruction in out of possession remains the same for this system now the third variant is a mirror image of the first variant of the tactic so you can see now that the complete wing back is playing on the right hand side instead of the left hand side and then you have your wing back on defensive playing on the left hand side so it's almost like a reverse of the original tactic your two defensive midfielders on support dt have also swapped positions because i know that the holding midfielder was to be on the right hand side but now he's on the left hand side and that the player that is more mobile is now on the right hand side you have your winger playing on attack dt on the left here and you have your attacking midfielder same instructions applied to all of them and then in team instructions wise everything remains the same you can see the high defensive line and also triggering the press and trapping the opposition into the central areas funneling the ball towards the defensive midfielders and trying to win the ball from there so guys that is the system as it works with history town in football manager 2024 regarding the links to how you can get this tactic you can actually find it on the view from the touchline website the blog site i'm just going to link the description to the article post and then you can find the tactic in there it's one of the first few lines you will find the tactic in there and you will score a lot of goals and if you want to get good results playing attacking football in the lower leagues of football manager you can actually go on and start with this tactic